Hi dear friends and subscribers, uh, welcome to your cricket happening show today with your host Ram. In this part of the cricket opening show, uh, what I am going to look at is as you know uh, now New Zealand are in Bangladesh already and tomorrow the first test match is going to start between New Zealand and Bangladesh and the first test match is starting at Shittagong uh, where the stadium facilities have been absolutely refurbished as you know uh, Bangladesh will be holding the T20 World Cup so considering that uh, they have they have relayed the playing square there. Uh, they have a new outfield. They have got some good drainage systems in place. Uh, the ground has been raised two feet. So so basically, if if it rain if it rains and there is forecast for rain tomorrow on the first day of the first Test match, uh, so it will at least you know the water can quickly drain and play can start. And what is very important is another thing as Bangladesh surely will be attacking with lots of spinners because they know New Zealand's fallibility against spin so uh, so that will be very interesting and so I will what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a brief preview of the test series which is coming up between New Zealand and Bangladesh uh, and we'll also look at the uh, first two game as you know uh, South Africa are already in the United Arab Emirates even the Pakistan are there in the United Arab Emirates and today is the first game uh, practice game for South Africa South Africa are taking on the Pakistan A team, uh, Pakistan South Africa on the first day uh, at Stumps uh, in Sharjah finished uh, on a very very strong position which I'll talk about if uh, time permitting but the first thing that I would like to do on my cricket show today is to preview the New Zealand Bangladesh cricket series. Now New Zealand Bangladesh cricket series uh, what really comes to mind is that New Zealand even though this is the test series the one day series was something where Bangladesh uh, actually dropped the New Zealand 4-0 as one would remember uh, Shakib Al Hassan was the hero there uh, walking away with the man of the match and man of the series uh, so that was the time uh, when probably Bangladesh was just speaking in the sense one felt that Bangladesh are uh, really really a good one day material but what is very important for Bangladesh that is not important now what is very important is that the, the question marks have been raised over Bangladesh as far as test matches are concerned now this is the big time where Bangladesh have to deliver. This is something uh, that they have been lagging behind. They, uh, I think uh, this is very very essential that Bangladesh had to put their best foot forward. Uh, they have their full strength team now back because Shakib Al Hassan is back. Um, they have all the other players, Tami Mikbal. So the, the Bangladesh team is looking in full strength and uh, one, uh, one thing in their favor uh, would be that uh, they would be uh, playing on their home turf uh, with lots of home support which is always the case uh, for any home team uh, so that is something uh, that would be psychologically helpful for them now uh, looking at uh, the Bangladesh uh, team uh, looking at uh, Bangladesh the opening batsman Tamim Iqbal uh, and uh, probably Anamul Haq now Anamul Haq was uh, out of this Bangladesh team for quite some time because uh, probably uh, I was told that he was uh, busy with his studies so he is back and Tommy McBall uh, you know what a what a wonderful batsman he is uh, if he gets going uh, but what was very important is that Tommy McBall has not scored any centuries for the last three years now Tommy McBall has to really really get going and he has to get a century under his belt because if he's in the if he's an opener and he's on the top of the batting order uh, it doesn't really speak much about Tami McBall, but Tami is a good batsman, but that is not his leader. For Bangladesh really, really need Tami McBall to fire uh, and he get a big score under his belt. So he's under a bit of pressure, not only with his, um, uh, not only by getting small scores, but he has to really get a century and he's pretty conscious of that. Uh, Anamul Haq, we know uh, he has been a pretty talented batsman as far as his one day internationals are concerned, but tomorrow it's a different ball game, Anamul Haq, so it will be interesting to see how Hanamul Haq shapes up in the test matches. Marshall Ayub, of whom much has been talked about, uh, he has been a prolific scorer in the Bangladesh Domestic Cricket League and that's the precise reason he finds himself a place in the Bangladesh Probables and uh, one is hoping, even Bangladesh is hoping that Marshall Ayub will definitely be making his debut uh, in this test series against uh, New Zealand and that will be tomorrow. So Marshall Ayub uh, is a very compact uh, little batsman I'm told uh, and then um, they have Mominul Haq. Now Mominul Haq was very very impressive but what Mominul Haq I have seen is that Mominul Haq is very good for one day years. Now as far as test match variety is concerned uh, probably too early because he likes to play strokes 
but they also have another test specialist there, Naeem Islam. So one has a feeling, considering the experience, Naeem Islam uh, might get the nod ahead of Maminul Haq. Uh, Mushfiqur Rahim, the captain, uh, he is a wonderful captain, he is a very motivating captain, and uh, also he is a thinking captain. And uh, he also leads with the bat. He also has, um, uh, um, I mean, uh, he, ha he had a big score against, um, uh, I reckon against uh, West Indies, if I'm not wrong, or Zimbabwe probably. I don't really remember. But uh, Mushmi Rahim and uh, Ashraful, Mohammed Ashraful, as you know, has been some great controversy, uh, and he's out of the team. So Mushmi Rahim has to lead from the front, and then the one important thing for them is Shakib Al Hassan is back. So that is going to strengthen the team to uh, absolutely uh, to a to a very large extent because Shakib Al Hassan, you know, what a what a wonderful contributor he is for Bangladesh cricket. Whether it is with the bat, whether it is with the ball, whether it is in the field. He is such a live wire, um, uh, live wire person, Shaggy Bilasan, and he will be contributing. And then, so that is the uh, b b very best part of uh, Bangladesh uh, uh, taking on New Zealand. And Shaggy Bilasan would uh, definitely think that he had a wonderful series against New Zealand where he already had the Bangladesh rankings going up in one day national. So he would like to uh, really uh, get something uh, big out here against uh, New Zealand. Uh, Nasir Hussain. Uh, well, the, we, we have seen that he has already had a century under his belt and he has been very, very impressive. Another bits and pieces player, but a very, very important uh, batsman lower down the order for Bangladesh. Uh, then the Mahmoodullah. Now, Mahmoodullah uh, also, I mean, he has not been uh, really living up to the reputation that he had um, with the bat. Now, that is very important that Mahmoodullah scores some runs. And um, the, the pace attack will be manned by uh, Rubel Hussain and Rubiul Islam. Now, Rubi al-Islam, uh, uh, whether how he bowls uh, at, uh, in Bangladesh uh, itself is going to be very, very interesting because he has been, he has bowled well on other pitches where he has got the ball to jag in and jag out. But uh, Rubi, so Rubi al-Islam will have his work cut out there uh, with Rubi al-Islam. So they are the ones who would be taking the uh, brunt of the uh, pace bowling. Uh, so the pace bowling, according to me, is not looking uh, very, uh, very strong so i think new zealand with their uh, current batting lineup i think they should not have it uh, they should have it easy probably uh, bangladesh uh, you know would be um, absolutely tempted to feel that their best bet against new zealand is to go with a all prong spin attack now as far as spin attack is concerned um, now so like gazi is then a red right almost spinner so he is um, you know what what a wonderful baller he is so so like gazi the right spinner you can also bat a bet let me tell you that and Abdul Razak, the left arm spinner. So Mahmoodullah can all the bowl, but I think that uh, they should go with Sohag Ganzi uh, and Mahmoodullah. Uh, and they have also Nasir Hussain's uh, off spin uh, bowling to uh, bowling to go go for. And then uh, they have Abdul Razak. Now Abdul Razak, the left arm spinner. So I have a feeling that Bangladesh probably tomorrow, uh, considering that the match is going to there is going to be rain is going to be forecast, the pitch could dry up, and you know New Zealand could be caught on a very very turning track. So, uh, looking at that um, prospect, I'm tempted to feel that Bangladesh will go with the all prong spin attack, where we will have Mahmoodullah, uh, two off spinners, so Haggazi and Mahmoodullah, and we'll also have Abdul Razak, the left arm spinner, and if the need be, Shakib Al Hassan, left arm, left hand, uh, left arm. So, now that is something probably one is tempted to feel that um, probably having Shakib Al Hassan, uh, they might be prompted to have um, uh, so Haggazi. Uh, as a Ramos spinner and probably leave Abdul Razak out of the team. But Abdul Razak uh, has got a good record against uh, New Zealand. So, and New Zealand, as you know, they have the fallibility against spin, uh, whether Bangladesh can exploit that. So, that is going to be very interesting. So, let's look at the New Zealand team now. Now, New Zealand are led, with, led by a wonderful captain. As you know, uh, Bangla B New Zealand have gone through a lot of things. And Brendan McCallum and uh, Ross Taylor are the most experienced uh, blokes in the team. And New Zealand, uh, for currently, if you look at look at their uh, graph, uh, they are definitely pleased. They have been doing well in Test matches, so that will augur well for them. And uh, New Zealand, Brendan McCallum, the captain, leads the way, and he's a very very intelligent captain. So that is something he is willing to go for the challenge uh, any time he wishes. So that is uh, wonderful about this captain, and he also uh, will lead with the bat. Uh, and then um, uh, Ross Taylor is another experienced bloke in the team. Uh, these are the most experienced persons as far as New Zealand are concerned. So they would definitely bank on the experience of Brendan McClellan and Ross Taylor and both of them have to score heavily in this particular series uh, for New Zealand to succeed. And then uh, we are looking at the New Zealand uh, 
um, proverb is there. Uh, Hamish Rutherford, as you know, he has been uh, he, he has shown that he, what a talent he is uh, against England. He definitely showed that, and he's a wonderful um, uh, player to watch uh, when he gets going. I mean, in the sense, he definitely is he, he's a lot more consistent too. Uh, so Hamish Rutherford also not doesn't believe uh, in just staying at the wicket. He believes in playing his strokes, and um, once he plays his strokes, uh, the stroke stays hit. And uh, he's uh, wonderful to watch. Uh, and Peter Fulton, who had a good series against England, uh, will be probably opening the innings with Hamish Rutherford. So that will be a good combination, Peter Fulton and Hamish Rutherford. Peter Fulton is a more, more compact player. Hamish Rutherford is more, an, more of an attacking player. And then Kane Williamson, uh, who has really come off age now, uh, and uh, his batting, well, you know, what a classic. Uh, he, he, he would be uh, termed as the most uh, classic batsman to emerge uh, on the New Zealand shores uh, after uh, Martin Crowe retired. So Kane Williamson um, has also scored a lot of runs. He's looking, uh, he, he sh uh, he, I mean, he has looked in good nick too. He has been uh, making some good scores. Uh, and he also uh, will be, his right arm off spin also be uh, pretty handy on these wickets. And then uh, Dean Brownlee. Now, Brendan McCallum has uh, very clearly said uh, whether they would uh, probably go for uh, uh, Corey Anderson uh, because he's uh, he's playing as an all-rounder but Dean Brownlee uh, is more of a very very compact batsman who can really stay at the crease uh, nurture the innings but Corey Anderson and also Dean Brownlee plays uh, spin pretty well so whether um, whether Brendan McCallum would be tempted to do that one has to wait and watch uh, but uh, probably uh, Corey Anderson uh, might play because he's more of an all-rounder uh, he also is capable of big hits, but being a test match, probably Dean Brownlee, who has had some good records in the test matches, might get the nod. Uh, Brian Watling is the wicket keeper and is also a good batsman. And then the bowling, as far as the pace bowling, if you compare the pace bowling resources to what Bangladesh has, uh, one has to very, very clearly, I would say, New Zealand uh, are absolutely ahead because they have, even though they are not very experienced bowlers, but Trent Bolt, as you know, is a wonderful bowler um, and uh, he can give the breakthroughs. And he can also swing the old ball. So Trent Bolt uh, definitely would be partnered by Neil Wagner, a very aggressive pace bowler. Uh, and he has been doing well too. And then they have Doug Bracewell uh, to support Neil Wagner and Trent. Uh, and so the pace bowling resources, according to me, as far as New Zealand are concerned, are definitely um, uh, something uh, absolutely over Bangladesh. If you compare them, I think the New Zealand pace attack is looking pretty strong. With Trent Bolt, Neil Wagner and Doug Bracewell, uh, who hits the deck hard, uh, will be... They will be manning the pace resources. As far as spin is concerned, uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, whether um, Brendan McCallum, uh, looking at the weather conditions, because there's forecast for rain and more rain, and probably pitch will dying, or whether he would like to uh, go for the spin, because he definitely has Kane Williamson, the right arm spinner, uh, and um, whether he would be tempted to go with a um, uh, with a uh, with a with a right arm leg spinner. Now Ish Sodhi, uh, as as you know, he did very well. Um, in the in the tour matches and uh, Isodi is a right arm leg spin bowler and Brendan McCallum feels a lot about him uh, whether Isodi would be given a chance uh, as, uh, in this particular match whether he will make his debut is a right arm leg spinner so it's, it will be sort of a surprise packet for Bangladesh because uh, they might have not seen Isodi much and then uh, Bruce Martin also who did well against England the left arm spinner and he can also bat Bruce Martin and Isodi can also bat uh, so whether um, it would be Interesting to see whether uh, what is New Zealand strategy, whether uh, they would go for the spin. Bangladesh, I'm sure they're going to go for lots of spin, but probably New Zealand might fancy that the pace attack is uh, pretty strong, and they might probably leave Isodi out of the attack and probably continue uh, with um, Bruce Martin, the left arm spin, and they have variety, the right arm spin of uh, Kane Williamson. Uh, so, well, um, I think all in all, this series is going to be. Uh, looking at it, as I said, the pace attack definitely has the edge over Bangladesh, no doubt about it. But as far as batting is concerned, uh, one could say with the with more experience in the Bangladesh lineup, with Mushfiqur Rahim, Tami Mikbal, Shakib Al Hassan, uh, I would give uh, some um, more marks to uh, Bangladesh probably for their batting. Uh, but as far as pace bowling is concerned, uh, New Zealand definitely pretty strong. And the spin attack, I would say both are absolutely even Stevens here. But I think we should have a very good series between Bangladesh and New Zealand. So that is uh, something I wanted to show. This was the preview of the Bangladesh versus New Zealand uh, test series, which is starting tomorrow. The first test match of the series, which is starting at uh, Shittagong. 
So, th so that is as far as the preview is concerned. Now, just having some uh, time on this YouTube broadcast, uh, I would like to talk about the um, first day's play uh, between South Africa and Pakistan A, uh, which is, as you know, South Africa and the United Arab Emirates. So this was played at the Sharjah, Sharjah Cricket Association Stadium. And South Africa have a good workout. In fact, uh, they had a good day. They finished at 3.32 for 5, uh, with all the 90 overs being bowled for the day. Uh, Graham Smith, who actually made a return uh, after a long layoff from cricket due to injury, uh, didn't have it good. In fact, he was the first wicket to go. He was LBW. In fact, he was dropped two in the slips. And then Hassan Adil actually had him LBW for two. Uh, there were good knocks for Alvaro Peterson, 58 with uh, six boundaries. Uh, Hashim Amla making a 50 of, with five boundaries. Kalis making 70 with six fours and four sixes. A pretty aggressive knock at that. ABD Villiers made 58 of uh, 73, 74. So everybody had a good workout, uh, barring Graham Smith, who could re who made only two runs. Uh, Dumini was unbeaten on 49 with six fours, and Duplessis was not out on 25 with one four. 332 for five of 90 overs on the stumps on day one uh, of this tour match. Uh, the bowling, well, Hassan Adil, one for 52. Imran Khan, none for 31. Azhar Shima, none for 41. Umar Amin bowled three overs. Yasir Shah, 20 overs, none for 80. Usman Khadir, one would remember, is the son of the former uh, Pakistani uh, great leg spinner, a legend, one would say, Abdul Khadir. And Usman Khadir was, uh, he bowled 18 overs, two maidens, 80 runs, and one wicket, following in his father's footsteps. Uh, and uh, Soheb Maksud, three overs, no maiden, one for 17. So that actually ends up my uh, YouTube broadcast uh, of uh, cricket happenings for the day. Uh, well, tomorrow, as I said, I'll be back with the uh, the first day's play report on the first test match between Bangladesh and New Zealand, uh, which kicks off the test series. Uh, that's it uh, for the day here uh, from your host, Ram, for Cricket Happenings. Uh, see you all tomorrow. Until then, it's goodbye. Thank you.